Scheduling a Teams meeting may seem easy, but there's a few things that you need to know in order to do it properly. You can schedule a meeting from Outlook or Teams, but there are a few options that are only available in Teams. So let's take a look. I have navigated to Microsoft Teams, and in the left-hand navigation rail, we're going to select Calendar. This is where you will come to find the most options for scheduling a team meeting. Go over to the right-hand side of the screen and you will see the purple New Meeting button. When you click on the drop-down, you will have a few options. Schedule a meeting, a webinar, or a live event. Let's start with scheduling a meeting. Let's create this meeting together so that I can point out some tips. The first thing you're going to want to do is add a title. Then you will add your attendees. Your options are to invite individuals, groups, or people who are external to your company. This is probably the biggest misconception I hear is that you cannot invite somebody who doesn't work for the same company you do to a Teams meeting. All you need is a valid email address and that person can be invited to your Teams meeting. Next, you will pick your date and time. The default increment is 30 minutes, but you can make your meeting as long as you need it to be, including making it an all-day event. Next, you will decide whether or not the event should repeat. Up to this point, we're seeing options that are the same as you would find in Outlook. Here's where it gets to be a little bit different. When scheduling a meeting from Microsoft Teams, you have the option to add a channel. Here's some things to keep in mind. When you select the team and then select the channel, every member of the team is invited to the meeting by default. The other thing that you need to know is once you send this invite, you cannot remove the channel. Adding a channel to a meeting is good when you need to invite a whole bunch of people who belong to the same team. However, it may not be the best idea if you'll be discussing information that should be restricted to just a few people. The next option is to add a location and by default, this is going to be an online meeting because it's being created from within Teams. However, you can also add a physical location if this is going to be a hybrid meeting where some people are in a meeting room and some people are viewing it from a remote location. And then you will want to fill in the details. I always suggest that you add at least a little bit of information so that people know why they should attend your meeting versus all of the other ones that they may be invited to. Now we have all our information filled out, so go back to the upper right-hand corner and click on Send. I quickly created a second meeting so that I can show you some differences between a meeting that has a channel attached to it and one that does not. Let's start with the meeting that does not have a channel associated with it. When I right-click on the meeting, you will see that you have the option to categorize the meeting. This will allow you to color code your calendar. For the regular meeting, you also have the show as option so that people reading your calendar can see if you are free, tentative, busy, etc. Let's open up the regular meeting so that we can see some options. Once you've sent the meeting, you can see that there are additional choices that weren't there before, such as adding a whiteboard, viewing the attendance roster, or adding tabs to the top of the meeting. Another thing that I would suggest taking a look at is the response options. By default, you can request a response, which means every time somebody accepts or rejects your meeting, you will get an email, and allow forwarding is automatically turned on. There may be cases where you don't want your meeting to be forwarded to others that you did not explicitly invite. If that is the case, you should turn off allow forwarding by deselecting the check mark, and now you can see that no one can forward this manager's meeting to anyone else. Let's send that update and then open up the other meeting that has a channel associated with it. Notice with this meeting that there are several options that are grayed out and you don't have the whiteboard option, nor do you have the option to add tabs to the top. If you draw your attention down to the channel meeting field, you can see that it's grayed out. And as I mentioned before, once you send the invite, you cannot take out the channel. This means that if you change your mind, you will have to delete this meeting and send it again. Now let's look at the next option for scheduling a meeting that can only be found from the Microsoft Teams application, and that is a webinar. I'm not going to go too deep into webinars because I have covered them in another video, which I have linked in the description below. 
But just as a refresher, when you select webinar, you have this require registration for everyone. This will allow anybody to sign up for your webinar that has a link to the registration page. If your business process requires it, you can restrict it to only people within your organization. Please note that once you send the invite, you cannot change this choice. The other big difference for webinars is you will create a custom registration form and people who want to attend will sign up versus you adding people to the attendees line. Is it just me or sometimes do you also need to start a quick meeting that wasn't really planned, but you need to get some people together? Meet Now is ideal for this situation. You can click Start a Meeting and Teams is going to create a really quick meeting for you and all you have to do is click Join Now. From here, you can copy the meeting link and quickly send it out to your colleagues or share it via email. The other option you have, which I use quite frequently, is I go to the Show Participants button in the toolbar and then you have the option to invite somebody by name. Simply type in that person or person's name and it will ring their computer so that you can pull them into the meeting. Earlier, we talked about adding channels to a meeting. There is another way to schedule a channel meeting. I'm back at my list of teams and I can pick a channel from a team. So for example, in M365 webinars, I'm going to select the general channel. Then on the right hand side, I'll click the drop down next to meet and select schedule a meeting. This is going to open up the new meeting details page where you can fill it in just like we did before. The difference is the M365 webinars and general channel has automatically been added for me. Please keep in mind that you're scheduling a meeting for everyone who's on that team, not just the people who are viewing that channel. This may not be the ideal option if you have large teams where you work. For example, where I work, we have a team with 6,000 people in it. I can't think of a single meeting that all 6,000 people need to attend. Now let's take a look at scheduling meetings in Outlook. As you can see here, the two meetings that we already created are on my calendar because Teams and Outlook do synchronize. But remember, the options that you see in Outlook are not the same as what you see in Teams. To demonstrate, I'm going to pretend to get started on the party planning for this year's holiday party. You do have the standard options like adding people, setting the time, determining if the event repeats, etc. You can make this an online meeting by ensuring the Teams toggle button is turned on. However, you cannot set up webinars, add tabs, add a whiteboard, or see attendance information from Outlook. Because I did turn on the Teams toggle button, once the invitation is sent, you will see the click here to join meeting and meeting ID and passcode in the bottom of the Outlook invitation. If you like this video, please consider subscribing because I have more videos about Teams and Outlook. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.